What is up, Flavor Family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna rock a chicken keto meal prep, and that only takes 15 minutes, and it has a summer theme, because it's like 100 degrees here in Chicago, and I wanna embrace those outdoor flavors, but I don't wanna go outside, but this is gonna be so darn good and so easy to make. So let's rock it. Some chicken keto meal prepping. Spice crusted, crispy skin chicken with a zesty salsa verde, and served with a red cabbage crunch slaw, with strawberries, pecans, herbs, and radishes. So here's the deal, you guys. If you love healthy meal prepping that actually has flavor, well, you found the best channel on YouTube. Click that little subscribe, and better yet, there's a little bell right below that where you get a notification when we go live every Friday morning, and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, this recipe starts with 10 boneless, skin-on chicken thighs that are in front of me. I've actually never made these with you before, but here's the beauty. It cooks quick because the bone is off, but they left the skin on. But I can never leave well enough alone. You know I gotta up the flavor even more by making a spice rub, but really quick, let me wash my hands. A teaspoon and a half of turmeric powder, and then a teaspoon and a half of smoked paprika. And then give it a mix up. And I can smell that turmeric already. It's very peppery, very earthy, and it's very popular right now with all those like hipster restaurants. They put it in lattes and teas and it's pretty much everywhere now, but it has a great flavor. Before I dust it with the spices, I wanna pinch over a liberal amount of salt, then add half of the spice rub, flip the chicken over, add some more salt, and the rest of the spice rub. And then add a couple teaspoons of avocado oil over the chicken. All right, I'm gonna de-bling the avocado oil, add a nice amount of liquid love. And a few of you guys have been noticing in the last couple weeks that the chicken thighs that I use are smaller than what you're used to. These are a little bigger because they have the skin on, but I buy organic chicken thighs and organic chicken breast, so they're not pumped full of hormones. I notice when you buy conventional, they're like the incredible hulk of chicken. They're ridiculously big. Um, it's a little more expensive, but if you wanna try organic, I find the flavor and the texture is far superior. So I guess sometimes art size doesn't matter in life. <laughs> All right, hands are washed, and normally I would set aside the chicken for a good 30 minutes, but this is 15 minute meal prep, so I took the chicken out about 20 to 30 minutes before I started cooking. I'm gonna set it aside just for about three to four minutes while we make the slaw. For the slaw, I'm using two kinds of cabbage. I'm using red cabbage and Napa cabbage. I like Napa because it's soft. It's not super hard like cabbage, and it's gonna be a little more pleasant to eat. So to break these guys down, I'm going to have the Napa cabbage and then slice it as fine as possible and add it to a large bowl. And then same thing with the red cabbage. Slice it as thin as possible and then add it to a large bowl. And then because the cabbage can be pretty hearty, I like to go in there and just give it a massage. That way it breaks down and it's more tender to eat. But I would say like a, a hard massage, like a, a Thai massage art. Have you ever had a Thai massage? It's really, really hard. We had one in Thailand. The chick was like, walking on my back and bending me into a pretzel. And I was sore the next couple of days. Uh, Desi, can you come in and help me uh, break down the rest of the veggies here? All right. All right, so the rest of the fixings are gonna be strawberries, radishes, some celery. So if you can start chopping that up, I'll start chopping up some other stuff too. And there's no carrots because those aren't really keto, but strawberries are, and it's the perfect season right now. So I want to get a few of those in there. I'm um, sure the strawberries in Bulgaria. Oh, so the berries and the cherries in, in uh, Bulgaria were incredible. If you follow along on the Flav City Instagram story, not only were they fantastic, but they were so cheap. And then Desi and I moved down to Istanbul and we ate almost everything the entire city offered. Okay, let's get the strawberries in the bowl the radishes, the celery, and then Desi, can you reach for some green onions there? And just shake those in too. And lastly, go in with a quarter cup of chopped pecans. All right, this is the base. Look at the color, babe. That's oh, good, that's right? Pretty. Right? Now, I don't want to do a mayo dressing, but I do want to have a slightly creamy-ish dressing. So Desi, can you grab the tahini? I want to make a tahini garlic lemon dressing because it kind of has the influence of Istanbul, where we just were and it's dairy-free. The entire recipe is dairy-free, which sometimes can be tough for keto. So Des, why don't you put about a quarter cup of the tahini in there, please? Then add the zest of half a lemon and the juice of one whole lemon. And then since we're in the zesting mood, Desi, grab one of those cloves of garlic and zest it in. I like doing that because it melts into the actual dressing. And then lastly, we'll crack in a little bit of black pepper and a quarter teaspoon of salt. 
and then go ahead and whisk it up. And you'll see it's getting kind of thick. So I'm gonna stream in a good third of a cup of water to loosen it up. Plus it makes the dressing nice and creamy. I want it to be really acidic and pop. Mm. It's nice and tangy. Is it? Yeah. Perfect. Very nice. All right, do you think we should put that on the slaw now or wait towards the end? Wait. <laughs> Why? So we don't sag the Exactly, the exactly. So we'll keep that on the side, but uh, the cabbage is pretty hardy. So if you wanted to dress it in the morning and then take it to work, you can totally do that. But for ideal freshness, we will wait to the end. All right, my friends, getting back to the chicken, you can see the marinade just in a few minutes has already done some work. It has that beautiful color on the skin. Now I'm preheating two cast iron pans because we know chicken rules. Number one, we don't cook cold chicken. Art, in case you don't know. Don't crowd the pan. You know, thank you, we never crowd the pan because. You want it to get some nice brownage. Thank you, I want brownage on that beautiful skin. I don't want them boiling in their own juices. So add a couple tablespoons of oil to the pan. As soon as we add oil to the pan, do we put the chicken in immediately, Art, or should I wait like 30 seconds? Option B, I want the oil to heat up. That way when the chicken goes in, everything is hot. And it's really all about that skin getting golden brown and crispy. I mean, it's pretty much life right there. So swirl the pan around one time and then add the chicken. And that's what you want. You see that sizzle immediately? If you don't have that, yank the chicken out, wait another 30 seconds and then get it back in. All right, both chickens are in the pan. If you can't get or you don't wanna use the skin on, just do boneless, skinless chicken thighs or breasts that all works for this recipe. Now. I want something super, super fresh and zesty as a sauce to pour over the chicken. So we're gonna make a salsa verde. Art just reminded me of an old school uh, Seinfeld reference about salsa. What is it? Why is the most popular condiment in the world? Because it's supposed to say salsa. Salsa, salsa. <laughs> right, we have too much time on our hands. All right. Spanish speaking, people must get confused when they order salsa. Salsa versus salsa. <laughs> This uh, salsa variety starts with a really good extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna add just over a quarter cup to a bowl. And then the next ingredient is parsley. If you guys don't know my parsley hack by now, when I get home from the grocery store with the bunch of parsley, I chop it up immediately. I put it in a ramekin, cover that with saran wrap. It will stay in your fridge fresh for seven to 10 days. Plus it's ready to pinch away on food at a moment's notice. This is the best hack that I know. So I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons. Is it? Where's your splatter card, Bobby? <laughs> I forgot my splatter card this time. And then take a heaping teaspoon of caper berries and then roughly chop them. The capers are gonna add a nice salty briny flavor. Art is getting hammered here. Add that to the bowl. The one time I don't use the splatter guard and Art's getting burned left and right. That's why I have two. If you don't have your splatter guard, Amazon link down in the description box and get one because you can save someone from getting burned like Art. <laughs> All right, next ingredient in here is gonna be a teaspoon of stone ground mustard. Then add the zest of half a lemon and the juice of half. And then stick in the zesting theme and grate in one clove of garlic. And then pinch in a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of black pepper. And then I forgot, a salsa verde usually has a good spice to it. You can add red pepper flakes, but these long red hot chili peppers or finger peppers are my favorite. I always have like two or three in the fridge and I use it for garnishing. So go ahead and slice it up really thin and then add it to the salsa verde. All right, before I continue with the salsa verde, let's check on the chicken. It's been about six minutes. Oh my goodness. Look at that skin, are you kidding me? That is golden brown and crusty and hot and sizzly. Now this one's in the middle, but look what happens if I flip over the one on the end. That one's still not crispy yet. So what I wanna do is flip a roux. Put that one in the middle. I'm gonna do the same thing back here. You can see these pieces here are beautiful, but this one still needs a little more love. So I'm just gonna rearrange it here. And this one looks really good too. Look at that. And then give it a mix up, just to make sure it's the right spice or the right seasoning. Wow. That is so fresh. It's crazy. <clears throat> Ooh, just the right amount of spice. Just the right amount, but it's all about the good quality extra virgin olive oil. I've said it before, I'm part of the Olive Oil Club. This comes to my door every three months. I have a promo code where you can get your first bottle for just a buck. Try it out, it's down in the description box because this stuff is the best oil ever. All right, salsa is done. All we have to do is wait for the chicken and then we'll yank it and plate this dish. Okay, it's been another six minutes. Let's get the chicken out of the pan. 
Oh, look at the crust on that chicken. Last one is out and I wish you guys once again had smell vision because the aromas coming off this chicken right now are unbelievable. But look at that crust. It is like beyond golden brown. It's like slightly crusty and charred and man, it's getting hot in here. So let's talk in a more eaten. Let's plate this dish and try it out. Go ahead and add the dressing to the bowl. I like the dresser on the outside of the bowl. Add a little bit of salt, a few cracks of pepper, and give it a good mix up. And then put a healthy portion down on a plate or a bowl. Grab one of the chicken thighs, slice it up. Oh, that skin is so crispy. And then put it right on top of the slaw. And then a healthy drink of the salsa verde. And we're done. And there it is, you guys. 15 minute keto summer meal prep and like a boss. Honestly, I want to eat this so bad. I had to with hold myself when I was plating this because the skin of that chicken is heaven. The salsa, once it hits it, kind of warms up and it's basically like a summertime keto-friendly picnic. And I have to try this. Let's go in. I went for the big bite here. Damn, that is awesome. All right, Desi, come over here. You gotta try this. The chicken skin is like a chicken chicharron. It is phenomenal. It's cooked through perfectly. And then it's nice and zesty because of that salsa verde. And then the slaw. The slaw is crunchy. It's creamy. It's fresh. It's zingy. It's everything you want on a hot summer day. And the fact that we made this in 15 minutes is redonk a donk. Mm. Isn't that crazy? How much flavor, babe? Insane. I like the skin on top. The skin. Art likes. It's good when you don't verbalize it. You just make noises. You guys, try out this recipe. It is down below in the description box along with the uh, storage, the heating, the macros, the olive oil link. When you make it, tag us on social media. Share this video. Sharing is caring. If you want to see two more pretty darn epic keto meal preps, they are right below us right now. But we will see you next week. Like always, until then, hashtag keep on cooking. Peace.